payloads. They are core to the Wi-Fi Pineapple pager, and they let you take advantage of the Linux foundation. If you've used other Hack5 gear like the Bash Bunny, the Packet Squirreler, the Shark Jack, you're probably familiar with the concept of Bash and DuckyScript combining to make payloads that let you leverage all of those Linux tools. And if you're new here, welcome, because in this video, I'm going to cover some of the fundamental concepts around payloads for the Wi-Fi Pineapple pager. And the biggest takeaway is that as opposed to relying on different firmware to take advantage of features of the hardware, the payload architecture allows you to write very simple scripts in Bash and DuckyScript to add features and extend the functionality of your device regardless of the firmware that's running on it. So this is a very exciting new concept to the Wi-Fi Pineapple that previously had an architecture with a web interface and modules written in Angular. This is very simple. It's Bash, it's DuckyScript, and it's quick and easy to build. So let's just go ahead and get started and first understand the directory structure and what that means. So I'm here in my virtual pager, and if I head down to my shell, I see I've been poking around the uh, payloads directory, and I'll see that within the, the root payloads directory, I have three subdirectories, alert, recon, and user. So alerts, we've talked about this a little bit in the past, essentially those are payloads that if they're enabled, they'll execute automatically triggered by events in the Wi-Fi airspace. Your recon payloads, those can be executed contextually from a recon scan results list, whether that's from an access point or in a client. And the important thing there is that those payloads get past that context from the target you selected so they can interact with just that target. User payloads, they can just run arbitrarily. So with that understood, let's then think about the categories within them. So if you're familiar with the Bash Bunny, you know from its repository that there are categories for payloads like, you know, general and, and prank and phishing and execution and exfiltration. And those are the concepts of the categories for your recon and your user payloads. Whereas the alerts payloads, they are pre-populated because these are the actual triggers. So if I look here, my uh, alerts subdirectories are, say, deauth flood detected, handshake captured, pineapple auth captured. When those events happen, the enabled payloads within those category subdirectories will execute automatically. And so this is really for a combination of execution and just keeping things tidy and a little organization. So within those directories, the third directory deep becomes the actual working directory of the payload. And each payload must have its own unique directory name. And then within that directory, all of its files, all of its assets, whatever it's bringing to the table. And by default, a payload only needs to consist of one file, payload.sh. I mean, it can have many more in its working directory, but that's all it needs. And as that file name implies, it's a shell script. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit more of it uh, by building our very own Hello World. All right. So here in my virtual pager, I also have an SSH session. So I can just pop over here and let's just go ahead and do this. I'm in the root. Let's go to payloads. Let's go to user. And we're going to go ahead and make a new category called example. So make directory example. And then within example, let's go ahead and make our new hello world directory. Great. And now we're just going to need one file, payload.sh. So I'll touch payload.sh. And from here, I can use Vi. I can use Nano. I'll use Nano. We're going to go ahead and write our first payload. The very first line of any shell script, what we need is a shebang or pound exclamation point slash bin slash bash. And then following with the style guide of hack five payloads, we're going to need to give it a couple of metadata things that are going to make it easier for us humans to read and understand what's going on with this payload. And that's going to be title, description, author, 
and version. So for the title, we'll call this Hello World. For the description, we'll say a classic. The author is going to be Hack5 Darren, and the version is going to be one. And I'm just going to show you the first and simplest and easiest ducky script command, and that is quite simply log. And this will help us introduce the concept of the payload log. So within log, I'm just going to give it within quotes, hello world. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and save that file. And lastly, I'm going to make it executable. If I see it is not currently executable, but if I do chmod plus x payload.sh, it is now executable. So if I come over to my pager and I go within payloads, you'll see I now have both a general and an example directory. If I go within example, you'll see there's my hello world. So let's select hello world and let's choose to launch it. And this right here is the payload log. The payload log is always running in the background of your payload. You can log to it whatever you need. When the payload finishes, you as the user can scroll up and down through this log and see all of the things that happened. Now, interactive elements can pop up over top of the log that require you know, user input, but that log will always still be there. Let me show you an example. Let's take this payload just one step a little further. So back to my shell, let's go ahead and edit payload.sh. I'm going to change my log line to say, this is a log line. And now we'll do alert, hello world. Now the alert command, again, ducky script, very simple, is just going to pop up a dialog, you know, with whatever information we gave it. And so if I come back over here, I'm going to hit back to exit our payload, and we'll say yes. And if I go back in to my example, hello world, and run it again, You'll notice this time I saw in the background this because it says this is my log line and then I get this alert that says hello world. Press back to dismiss that and you'll see there's my log line. Again, you can have as many lines of, of your log as you need and as it fills up the buffer, you'll be able to use the up and down arrow to scroll through them and see every line of that. So there is like the most dumb, simple uh, hello world payload that is a user payload that you can get going. So we've just introduced two bits of Ducky script, log and alert. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at those. If we go back to our shell and I say which log, it's going to say that that's in USR bin. Let's head over there. CD USR bin. And I'm going to use this ls command, which is just going to list all of the all caps files in this directory. And you're going to see here, each of these is a ducky script command. And I'm going to show you that if you'd like to start working with these and understanding how they work, all you have to do is just run one of them. So for instance, I showed you alert. You may also notice that up here there's alert ringtone. Let's go ahead and run alert ringtone and it will tell us the usage. It's going to raise an alert modal with a ringtone and it simply accepts true or false, uh, whether or not to ring, and then our message. So I can do alert underscore ringtone, true, and then hello world. And I get my hello world with my ringtone. Uh, that is going to be the case for most all of your ducky script commands. And the docs are being built out with a lot more information on this and knowing how the community has grown from, like I said, the Bash Bunny and Shark Jack and Packet Squirrel. We expect a lot of creativity and questions, and I encourage you guys to join the community. There's a very active Discord already, and I can't wait to see what kind of payloads we all come up with. Now, in the next video, I'm going to get into some more of the contextual elements of payloads and get into the environment variables that are passed to your alert uh, payloads so we can start seeing what's going on in the airspace. I'll see you there.